With 2019 coming to a close and 2020 right around the corner, I think this is a great time to talk about the goals I have and just share with you guys exactly a little bit more of who I am. Now, a lot of you guys who are watching this video right now will know me as the credit card guy or credit Brian, but prior to me being that name or being placed in this industry, I actually started this YouTube channel off the idea of just being in general self-improvement, personal finance, investing, and just sharing with you guys some of my life experiences. Now, within this past year, we've gained about 30,000 subscribers, which I believe is crazy. I know in 2020, we're going to hit 100,000 subscribers and that's actually one of my goals. So starting out, if it wasn't obvious already, I am Asian. Growing up in high school, around sophomore to junior year, I had my fair share of troubles. I actually got expelled at one point. I got suspended a multitude of times. I got sent to an alternative program. I got sent to military school, and I just wasn't on the right path. When you get expelled, two options happen. You actually get no education at all, or you get sent to some type of alternative program. I really didn't want to be like that growing up in my life. And a lot of people will just see me now as Credit Brian. Little do people know, I never even took a business class or knew what an entrepreneur was up until a couple years ago. I was just your typical Korean American kid that went to Sunday church and just got in trouble at school and just didn't really know what he wanted to do with his life. After witnessing the possibility of having a grim future, just by seeing a reflection of myself and these other kids in that program, I realized, we we're gonna do something different. I eventually did well enough at that alternative program. I stood out and I was actually readmitted back to my high school. I came back to high school. I put a lot of my energy back into studying. I put my energy back into community and I built a good group of friends in the sports I played. So I grew up playing football in middle school and in high school. And my football coach is actually my rugby coach too. My football coach told me to play rugby. I told him, I don't know what the hell that is and I don't ever wanna get near it. After him asking me for months, I actually ended up playing rugby and I stayed with that for about five to six years and I still play that now. The most important things about rugby that changed my life was community, leadership, teamwork, discipline. It's really the core fundamentals that I have now that I implement in my business that I learned from that sport. So by playing rugby, I actually did fairly decent as well. I was invited to nationals. I was invited as the all-star player twice for Maryland and I went to the state championship for five years. Those times were good. I feel like that's my peak right there. Those are some of the best times of my life. Those sevens tournaments, those 15 tournaments that we've had. And later on, I actually got two division one scholarships to continue my rugby career in collegiate sports. I actually ended up turning down the rugby scholarships for two reasons. One is because it wasn't well-funded. So I did get scholarships, but it did not cover my full tuition. And because most of these schools are considered private education schools, their tuition in state would be about $50,000. And if I even got it covered for half, I'd still be paying about $25,000. And even though I wasn't into business at that time, it's a no brainer. I realized, you know, growing up poor your whole life, you realize why would I wanna be in even more debt than I have to if I don't have to at all? So really Really, the rugby scholarships weren't anything to me just because it wasn't a full ride. And in addition to that, I did understand the possibility of risks. While I was playing in high school at one point, I had to get surgery for my shoulder, tore my Achilles at one point, and I just didn't think it would be worth it to continue playing rugby just to get some type of education. If I knew that one day I KO and I'm out or I'm paralyzed or something really bad happens, then what's next? What do I have left in my arsenal? Now, after I made that decision, I did leave a lot of people down. My next and only option at that point was to actually go to community college, which I really didn't know much about. Now, while I was going to community college, I actually spent like three to four years there because I only took like two to three classes a semester. You could normally get out of community college within two years if you take five classes a semester, but I couldn't really find myself getting the classes that I wanted or the credits that I needed because I registered so late. And also I got something called MC-itis. The school I went to is called Montgomery College and it's known to be a pretty good community college, but everyone who goes there usually gets in some type of slump. We call that MC-itis. And this is also just a general community college thing. I feel like because we're commuting to community college and because we don't really have a community there, we don't have that many friends. You can get in this slump. It's like minor depression. And I'm going to admit I had minor depression. I was going through a really bad heartbreak during that time. I lost all my friends from high school. I lost all my teammates. I wasn't going out to play. And I was really just stuck in my town, not knowing what to do. Now, right before I started community college, I was working two jobs and I got my third job. And let me tell you exactly what those jobs were because these jobs changed my life. 
The first job I had was actually SEO research. I was just in this guy's basement. He was an entrepreneur. He was making half a million dollars a year. He would always flex on me with that number when I was like 18 years old. I'll come to his house, sit in his maid office in the basement area and just copy and paste these proposals that we would make for potential SEO clients. I couldn't do that. I hated that job. I would always fall asleep. It was the worst thing ever. And I realized I'm never going to work like that again in my life. The job I got after that was actually working with kids who had autism and disabilities. This was the best job I ever had in my life. And for anyone who asks me, Brian, what's like, what, what should I start with my first job? I want to learn how to talk to people. I want to learn like human skills. I would say two things, either work at a retirement home or work with kids who have disabilities because working with kids with disabilities, you learn a lot of things, but you also get to see a lot of things. You also realize how fortunate we are to just be able to see, just be able to talk, just be able to breathe and eat on our own. And every day I would leave feeling grateful. While I was going to community college and while I was working with the kids with disabilities, I was actually working with my dad as well too. So I was always balancing these three things and I was always juggling it. And my dad actually came to the US right before I was born, I think when he was around 20 something. And he's always worked the same job. This job is a hardwood floor contractor. It's basically where it's a super labor intensive job. You put down all the hardwood and you just do that for the rest of your life until you die. There were some times when he did need extra hands, he needed help. And those are the times where I really couldn't say no, just because I was able to see firsthand exactly how labor intensive this job was. When you see your own parent having a ton of back problems, wrist problems, always hurting, always physically just in pain, it's just hard to go to school and work with these kids while you're witnessing that. So I was actually able to juggle both. Sometimes I would skip class or go to class late or other times I would actually call the parents or tell the center no, like, hey, I don't think I'm gonna be able to come in today. I really have to go in work and help my dad out. I did that for quite a while. It was really labor intensive. Some days it would be eight to 12 hour shifts and you're just hammering away. And this is the life that you have to live if you don't have the best opportunity, if you don't go to school around here, if you're stuck working a blue collar job. Now, now, while I was managing all of that and while I was still playing rugby, I realized this is something that's really just not going to last at all. Even if we're working this hard, we still never have enough money. There's still debt in the family. So I got to a point where I got really fed up, to say the least. I got fed up with my life situation. I was doing as much as I could. And even though I was helping out as much and spending as much time in my day as possible, I realized like this isn't going to be enough. This is not going to be sustainable. I would say all of this happened within the past few years. I decided I wanted to get into online business. I remember watching this one video on YouTube that just changed my life on how you could possibly make money doing e-commerce, doing drop shipping, and that was all I needed to see to set me up to get to where I am now. Guys, you really need to understand, I had no desire in business. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. I didn't understand any of that. I just realized I want to be able to support my family in any way I can. Now, my family was never poor my entire life. I think right before the recession, my family was doing fairly well, and that's how I was able to live in the area I live now, which is Montgomery County, Maryland, which is fairly good. As a young kid, I saw a lot. I saw exactly how much you can build up, but how fast all that could be taken away, and that really just stuck with me for a while. For the remainder of my life, I grew up with financial insecurities. I couldn't go out, eat with my friends if I wanted to. I had to stay home because I had no money to go out. And I remember while I was going through community college, I also had to lend my mom a lot of money too. And she would always pay me back, but it was just a lot of burden for me to endure. I was never exactly sure if my parents were able to pay the house bill or if my parents would be able to pay that month's utilities. It really does mess with you to a certain degree. And I really feel like that's what gave me the passion, the desire to get to where I am now. But a lot of the friends that I know who went through some type of drastic change in their life where they saw some type of financial instability or they were able to witness just how a recession could affect them, those are the people that I see now really starting their business, still hustling, still being productive and just doing something with their life. Now, one of the biggest things that I am grateful for right now is my family's financial instability because that really developed me into the person I am today. I started my business in the online space for two reasons. One, because it had low overhead, and two, because you had major, major opportunity to make a lot of money. I first started with the drop shipping business model, and if you guys check out some of my older videos, you guys will actually see me like working in my basement, shipping out orders, and I changed that drop shipping business over to a private label business where I bought wholesale and I would ship it out to the customers to build this unique private label brand that I knew had a lot of potential. While I was managing that, I actually got into Amazon FBA as well too. That's a very popular business model that people want to get into. For anyone who doesn't know, drop shipping is 
is very easy. You basically just find a supplier, you ship it to the customer, you do the marketing and boom, 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 and then you make money. Amazon's kind of similar to that, but you do buy wholesale, you ship it over to an Amazon warehouse and you hope that it starts selling on Amazon because right now there is a lot of competition. I still remember like it was yesterday when I was sitting in class, I had my Shopify open, the teacher was like yelling at me for being on my computer and looking back kind of sounds stupid, but I, I just felt so cool during that time. So while I was in school and while I was doing all this, this is when I started my own business and it really started taking off. I started out just making one or two sales a day, but then I started going into the couple hundred dollars. And once you know how to make a couple hundred dollars a day on Shopify or using Facebook ads, all you have to do is scale that. You don't even have to, you just replicate what you're doing and you put more money in and you, and it spits more money out. That's how easy it was. And it was just so amazing. So I actually saw the ability to make money online. I did not know it was a real thing. And when I first witnessed it, when I was like, okay, I can actually make money online. That's when I started doing it more. That's when I started scaling. That's when I considered dropping out of school, which I eventually did. Now, after drop shipping, after FBA, I got more into the marketing side of things and I wanted to start my own marketing agency. So I actually teamed up with one of my good friends that I used to fish with back in the day. And this is another like business thing that I wanted to do. I actually started an Instagram account. It's called Bass Jungie. And I started a YouTube channel where I went fishing. I thought that was something I could scale. I thought that was gonna blow up. The Instagram page did really good. No bots, you guys, 100% real organic traffic. I grew that to 10,000 followers. That's more than I have on my own personal brand for Credit Brian. And that was doing fairly well. So I actually had a friend that I used to fish a lot with and he was a really talented videographer. I ended up teaming up with my business partner. We ended up starting a marketing agency, which we still have now. And with that, we've worked with a lot of bigger clients in the DMV area. For me, I realized e-commerce was good and all, but why waste all your energy trying to get one order or trying to just deal with all these customers when you can get one client that pays you five to $10,000 a month and just get a couple of those. With the e-commerce brand, I kept having to hire new virtual assistants, bring more people on board because I couldn't scale fast enough. I realized something with a marketing agency where you have less customers, you have fewer clients, but you have more important duties to fulfill. That's a position that I wanted to take. Now, we worked with some very influential people around the DMV area. We had the opportunity to work with the Sugar Ray Leonard team. We worked with a company called American Esports. We also worked with the first Major League Rugby team. And with the first Major League Rugby team, I actually had the unique opportunity to run lead on their marketing campaigns. I was able to secure a lot of these jobs just through simple networking, knowing people in my area, and something with like the rugby. Because I grew up playing rugby, and because a lot of these coaches saw me growing up in high school, and they saw what I was doing now, it just opened the doors. So while I was starting business, I usually stayed pretty low key, but I don't recommend people to do that now. I recommend branding yourself because you open yourself to more opportunities so you can build that network. I used to be so in my head. I used to think I was so cool, you guys, for being able to make a couple hundred dollars on drop shipping, but I realized just how stupid that was. The best decision I made in my life was to be able to brand myself and to just connect with other entrepreneurs, especially people who are young. Now, during my three to four years at community college, I actually did not walk the stage, but I did get my diploma. I did graduate with an associate's degree, but I did not think I would have to walk that stage because I was going to graduate from the University of Maryland. That was my original intentions. I decided to drop out of UMD College Park. I decided to just go full head with the marketing agency and e-commerce and just build my businesses. During that same time, while I started my personal brand, like I just mentioned, I started my YouTube channel, which is the channel you guys are seeing this video on right now. My first couple videos were just like day in the life vlogs and just like entrepreneurship and like my story videos, just similar to this one, but I made one video on the American Express gold cart unboxing, which actually blew up, got the attention of people like Shifu and just other people in this niche. And once that happened, I realized, hey, this might be something that I might need to be in because I grew up spending a lot of time actually using credit cards for all of my businesses. When I started e-commerce, I was watching the same videos you guys watch now. I was trying to tell people there are benefits to business credit cards, but no one knew about it. And also during that same time, I was telling all of my friends who were in businesses as well too, to get into business credit cards or get into credit cards and get the rewards, but no one seemed to listen. So once that American Express Gold video did well, I realized, okay, this is maybe where I wanna focus in. I need a niche down anyways, because no one is finding my channel. So I decided to go into the credit card market and just to start scaling from there. Now, fast forward a little bit and we are here. I've met some incredible people on the way. I've met some people that I never expected to ever meet. I'm in contact now with people I used to watch and look up to every day. 
day and it's just a crazy it feels like a dream right now i have no schedule but the schedule i set for myself for that day i can travel anywhere i want and 2019 even though it had its ups and downs for sure it was definitely one of the biggest blessings of my life. Now, to tie this back into the actual topic of the video, which is my future plans, my goals, and just where I'm headed, here's where we are. YouTube is a growing, growing platform. We have YouTube TV, YouTube Red, people paying YouTube for membership subscriptions right now because people would rather watch content creators or influencers making YouTube videos than TV. Baby boomers instilled the idea to the younger generation that credit is bad, and I don't blame them. They went through a tough time. You go through the recession, you go through the depression, you go through all these different things, and you do realize lending money may not be something that is good for someone. As we all know, that is a a false stigma, but people out here, just like Dave Ramsey, for example, still promote the idea that credit is just awful for you. I believe once people get older and once that generation just keeps going up, that idea is going to start to go away. Now to tie this within the future of credit cards and just what I have to share, I do believe credit is a supplement to whatever we're doing. When I say credit's a supplement, I'm not talking about like a multivitamin or like a fish oil. Credit is something that's going to complement your own primary income or goal. I don't believe you should use credit as your main source of leverage if you have nothing else going for you. Credit is really like an arcade game or credit is like a slot machine. You have to put in money to get something back. If you guys have 15 months of no interest and $50,000 worth of a credit limit, what are you gonna do with that if you don't have any business passion, if you don't have a side hustle you wanna pursue? Having a large no APR credit limit can be pretty bad if you don't have a goal of where you wanna put that in. If you're unemployed right now, if you have zero income and you're trying to get these credit cards, how are you going to hit these welcome bonuses without gaming the system? When it comes to this hobby, it's all about maximizing your results. It's all about getting that positive return on investment, but you can't do that if you're not spending money or if you have no income coming in. There are people who manufacture spend. There are people who try to game and cheat the system buying gift cards and reloading it, but that's not something that's going to be sustainable. And at some point you will get caught for that. Don't think of credit cards as something that's going to be your main hustle. Think of credit cards that are going to support you. And that's really going to be something that complements whatever you're doing. You could be working a corporate job. You could be running e-commerce. You could be running marketing. You could be just working like a couple part-time jobs. But if you guys use credit for maybe the cost of goods, maybe your gas, if you use that to the full potential, that's when you're going to be able to start maximizing your ROI. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the credit industry is also a huge community. Now, we built out that Facebook group within this past year and we grew it to 10,000 members, which is absolutely insane. But what you guys will see is that a lot of people have different backgrounds and different occupations. We've had people who are police officers. We've had people who are lawyers, doctors, teachers, students, people who are really old, people who are really young, females, males, people from all over the state. At the end of the day, this passion is shared among a lot of different people because there's no discrimination regardless of your income or what you can apply for. This is just determined by your credit score that you really have the full ability to change and determine what that's going to be. The credit hobby is not going to go away anytime soon. I don't see it ever happening in the future and I don't see the community ever really changing at all. I do see a lot of younger people coming in and a lot of less older people just because I believe once you get to that age, maybe 50 plus, you really don't care as much about the points and miles and you care more just about chilling or retiring. My favorite thing about this industry though is that there is a lot of equilibrium. When we're talking about other business models, even real estate, Usually, if someone wants to profit, another party has to give in exchange for that. What that means is real estate. If I'm looking to buy a house and a real estate agent wants to make money, I have to spend money for him to make money off of a flip or whatever unit, if it's a cash flow rental unit, or even if we're talking about something like drop shipping, the wholesaler will win, the manufacturer will win, maybe even I will win if I am the drop shipper, but usually the consumers will have to pay that extra fee that I put in my pocket and someone ends up giving up just a little bit more when it comes to the credit card industry no one's really losing anything there is a lot of equilibrium in this hobby and that's because the banks actually make their money off the interchange fees consumers get the credit cards we use that to travel the world for free and then someone like me like a youtube influencer a content creator or even a blogger can promote these credit cards and stay within affiliate network and also gain commission on that so 
That's why I say there's this triangle, there's this equilibrium, and that's really the market that you want to put yourself in. But you guys also need to keep in mind that equilibriums can be broken in any way. So if banks decided to charge people whenever they applied for a new credit card, that could break the equilibrium. Or if the consumers, if we found out that they weren't actually giving us the full benefit, or if they devalued everything and it wasn't worth it to carry a credit card anymore, then that would break the equilibrium. Or really, if just people didn't find that much positive return coming from these cards, there just would be no incentive to sign up. And that's why I believe credit card, hobby, passion, rewards, points, miles, they're never going away. I don't even see them really devaluing a lot of things. I feel like they're going to limit the way things are. I feel like they're actually going to make this industry a little bit more strict in terms of how you can redeem your credits, but I don't see them getting rid of anything. I do see them actually adding more categories, more unique opportunities to be able to spend more money on their cards and just different opportunities in terms of signing up for value. A lot of people have this idea because we're making so much money off of these credit cards that they're going to get rid of it or they're going to catch on to what we're doing. Banks have a very very smart brain. Guys, we're talking about the banks here. Banks are pretty smart and pretty intelligent in what they're doing. And the reason why they're promoting this and the reason why they offer these type of welcome bonuses is because they understand how much they're getting back in return as well too. If there were no rewards, if there was no incentive, there were no points and miles or cash back, there would be no incentive to use these cards. I could use my debit card and just just go on with it. The only benefit I would get is that credit cards actually protect me if I lost that credit card, but banks understand exactly what's going on. And that's the best part about this. Now, I do believe that this could get shut down for only one reason. And that's actually if all the banks decided to unite or merge into one entity. Because we have different banks, because Chase and American Express are always competing each other, City and Capital One are competing with each other, Discover just, I don't even think they wanna compete with, they're just in their own thing. Because these banks have different competition levels and different people inside of their market, there is always going to be a good enough offer because that competition exists. And that's really just like the US economy right there, democracy, whatever you guys call that. If we saw only one bank, then we would see them limit things. And I hope this never happens. And I don't believe it ever will. I don't think Chase and American Express would ever merge or acquire each other, but that's really the only time I can actually see this passion disappearing. So my goal for 2020 is to actually hit 100,000 subscribers. I do believe that subscriber count really doesn't determine how many views I'm gonna get. The views are gonna be determined by what type of videos I put out and just the content quality of what I put on my channel. I feel like if I wanna accelerate that growth, it's just going to take a little bit more work for me. Better quality videos, better scripted videos, better edited videos, and I know it'll happen like that. Now, another financial goal that I have set for myself is really to diversify my income. I'm planning on starting a couple more private brands and I want to be able to partner up with other people on that just to lessen the load for me. I also want to diversify just what I have with YouTube because at any time this could shut off you guys. If YouTube decides Brian's content, we don't like it anymore. He just, we just, we, we're going to turn him off. That could happen. I could get demonetized. The algorithm could put me on a separate list where I don't get shown as much. Anything could happen. So for me to combat that, I want to lessen my risk. I want to have more different avenues of income, whether that's merch, whether that's a course, whether that's an exclusive group, or even if it's a blog. Those are all things that I'm going to start doing in 2020. And one of the biggest things that is changing for anyone who doesn't know is that I'm actually moving out of my parents' house to be able to pursue more and be able to work more. When I'm doing work at home, I'm really limited on the times I can actually record a video quietly. I'm also very distracted when I'm in this environment. I really hate saying no to things or not being able to eat with my family if I have to do work. And I know that if I'm in my own environment, if I'm in my own place, I have the freedom, I have the productivity, I have the ability to schedule more things out and really just take my brand to the next level. Now, on top of that, you guys, one of my goals is to make 50K profit this coming year. I do believe that's completely attainable. All I have to do is just grind, work, hustle. You guys know the thing, but I will do more vlogs. I will just do more day in the life videos once I am moved in and I'm settled because that's when I can really just record anywhere without shame. Now, those are my financial goals. Those are some of my career goals. It's really YouTube. It's really starting other brands and also just helping as many people as I can. I also have some physical gym goals that I want to hit. I want to do five plates on the squat. I want to do six plates on the deadlift. I want to do three plates on the bench. And I also want to do a powerlifting competition at one point this year. Now, my life goals on top of that, I want to meet my grandparents again. I have only seen my grandparents once or twice in my life. I don't really remember too much of it. And for me to do that, I have to go to Korea and... 
it's just something I've always wanted to do. My whole life, our Christmas, our Thanksgiving, our family dinners have always been pretty empty and that's because a majority of my family still lives in Korea. I have one part that does live in Australia as well too and once I'm able to create some more financial stability in my life, what I want to do is actually be able to go to Korea to just hang out with my grandparents because I know they're getting old and life is pretty short. Now on top of that, not only do I want to go there, but I want to be able to give the opportunity for my parents to go there. And it's really tough for them just because they're always working. But I want to give the opportunity for my parents to also be able to take that break just because they haven't done so in a really, really long time. So that was my life goals, that was my financial goals. Those are some life travel goals and just where I wanna go. But most importantly, you guys, I don't wanna lose my vision. I don't wanna lose my way. This is gonna be a little bit of a different topic, but I often don't talk about spirituality and personal finance. They really don't mesh at all. But, but I'm someone who grew up going to church. I'm not the best Christian at all, at, by no means. I have a dirty mouth and I have really bad road rage and I'm just not a good role model. But this is something that I also want want to focus on in terms of the goals I have set for this coming year. I struggle a lot with daily things, but one of the things that I don't want to lose my way on is just my spiritual walk and just what I have to do. I want to be more observant about myself, my emotions, but I also want to pray continuously just on having gratitude, just not losing my vision and just sticking on the path of good because I do understand that with fame and money and all these things and success that a lot of people tend to lose their way. If I accomplish all my goals, if I win my powerlifting competition, if I hit my YouTube subscriber count and I build all those businesses and we're doing 50 to 100k a month none of that is worth it if I throw away the spiritual aspect of my life I truly believe that I will fail in my life journey if I don't keep that with me so everything for me is a balance the work I do right now this isn't real work what I'm doing right now sitting on my desk talking to a camera and making money this is not real work real work was me busting my back working three different jobs, growing up just with no money. I feel like that was work. I feel like blue collar jobs is what works. I understand I'm just in this very unique opportunity and I just never wanna lose that gratitude, that perspective and just what I have in being in this situation. Not many people get this opportunity and I'm just super, super thankful to even be here talking to people, to a camera, I mean through the lens, but you guys know what I mean. This is going to be probably the longest video on my channel and I know the thumbnail was like a journal, so I generally use journals um, growing up. I have, I just write a lot of random things, but I have my goals too in the back. How many subs I want, how much money I wanna make, how much I wanna save up. Um, how much debt to pay off, like student loans, things like that, what credit cards to get, what truck parts I want. <sighs> journal has helped me a lot, you guys. I'll make another video if you guys wanna see anything of me journaling, but that's really my story. That's my goals. Um, for anyone watching this video, I hope you stick by me with my journey just to, just to see if I can hit those dreams because this time next year, I wanna look back at this video and I wanna look back and just realize where I was during that time and just how much I grew because looking back at my old videos just from a year now, it's a completely different game and you guys will be able to tell just from the seriousness or the aesthetics of the video now, so many things are changing. I'm not even gonna be in this room a week from now. So we have New Year's coming up, you guys. My birthday is in about two to three days and then we just had Christmas. It's been a crazy year, you guys, but I just wanna say thank you so much for the support. Thank you guys so much for the amazing year. Thank you guys so much for the kind messages, all the likes, all the comments, all the emails I get, all the messages I get. I'm sorry if I don't respond to every single one of you guys. I'm going to get to that at some point, but I just want you guys to know I am very thankful for all of it. My goal for this year is to just keep working. It's just to keep putting in the time, the effort to improve the quality and to really just be able to help as many people as I can. If I focus on those things, if I focus on just providing Value. If I focus on just providing education, entertainment, building these communities where people have an opportunity to grow themselves, I know I don't have to worry about the money. I know I don't even have to focus on that and it's just going to come anyway. So here's my goals, you guys. Take that. <laughs> I'm an open book with it. And um, yeah, law of attraction, baby. Year two, year three, what are we? Yeah, law of attraction, year two, year three. Um, meditate pray, whatever spiritual, don't pray if you don't want to. I don't want to push that on anyone. 
Um, but just do your thing, you guys. Find happiness in what you do, whether that's the relationships you have, the work or the career you're in, but really just find fulfillment in the everyday things that you do. Check out Napoleon Hill. I love that guy's books. I learned a lot from him and I do believe a lot of my success came from reading the content in his type of books. It's about law of attraction and things like that. So that's the video. My throat is sore. I'm really excited for this coming year. And like always guys, peace out. Bye. <laughs>